Hey, what's up guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And this time I want to show you how you can make highly detailed real-time fluid simulation. You can implement these techniques in a lot of your client work and I'm already doing this. So I'm just so thankful that LiquidGen is enabling me to make this real-time fluid simulations. There is a lot of new LiquidGen training on my Patreon. For example, this medical training course that I'm creating right now. I think it will be around two hours, but there is also a lot of other LiquidGen training that you can see here in those collections if you want to create honey or chocolate or a lot of cool other stuff, all right? So yes, if you really mean it serious with leveling up your skill set, then you can think about joining me here on Patreon. All of that stuff will be included in the Knights membership, all right? So what are we going to create today? I was inspired by a Soba group by a beautiful animation they did for Entero Germina. Okay, you can see it here. And I just muted it so that you can hear my beautiful voice here. So a lot of these shots are super inspiring for me and I definitely can't resist to create also like a liquid with Storm tutorial in the next days or weeks. This is just something I'm super curious about to create, to get inspired also by this animation here, also the fluid tunnel. This is just amazing. But what we want to create today is something like this one. The fluid is going down like a little riverbed in your throat or into your stomach. I'm not an expert on this, but you can see that this one is happening in your body. The little vitamins or probiotica roll down, followed by the fluid by a little bit of a water stream. So this is looking amazing. Amazing. Let me just see this one more time. Okay, I'd really love this one. And by the way, I also created a lesson inspired by this one when this one is jumping up. And now just look carefully this beautiful inflation, okay? So there's also a lesson on this one and also on this one, like an acid river where something is jumping into it and then going through it like a little boat, okay? So this is so beautiful and inspiring. But as I said, today I want to focus on this one. This is the reference day. Kept it a little bit more muted for the client. I really love this one. But you can see that I went a little bit hard on the colors here. So my meat, my flesh here is a little bit disgusting with all of the surface details, okay? I just couldn't resist to give this one some saturated color in contrast so this is my version here but you can see that i also created this night version and let's just see this one last time before we dive into cinema 4d and create something like this you can also see that i gave this one some beautiful camera movement and some time remapping to make it cinematic and just intense so it's coming in just a little bit of a slow motion then then kicking out again something like this one okay so this is what we want to create today i already mentioned that the full course about two hours will be on my patreon but now here we want to stay a little bit more focused and try to create something like this one okay so now i would say the challenge for me is to give you something inspiring and just show you how powerful cinema 4d in combination with liquid gen is but of course now i have to really work hard to please you in a couple of minutes right because it's just not possible to go through everything so now i have to be very focused and try to give you something valuable so we want to start in cinema 4d we want to create like a little riverbed put this one into liquid gen and make a beautiful riverbed simulation that we then later could put back into Cinema 4D and put the vitamins in it and just make it beautiful, okay? All right, guys, finally in Cinema 4D and you can see that this is one of my final simulation files. This is just looking really nice. I think I should go into the camera, by the way, to make this one more dramatic. The camera is following the liquid and is making a little bit of a rotation here to make it more dramatic. And then we are already out of the shot. You can see it here rendered with redshift. I mean, this one is just looking very, very beautiful. And I will also teach you on how to yeah just go through the shading through the lighting through the camera movement the time remapping to really build a final shot okay but now here on youtube we have to be a little bit more focused i don't want to make the training too long here so i would say we just built something from scratch here we just have to keep it a little bit more simple so i want to first create a riverbed and therefore i want to create a cube and then i want to create a spline and carve out a little funnel a little riverbed out of this shape here okay so i think that the good idea would be to maybe put this one below zero so that you see the axis cross here. Now you want to deselect the cube, go to the spline pen, press F2 to see this one from the top, press NA to see the cube. Now you can just create a little river shape here. Let me just do it like that. All right, something like this one, like a double S curve. I really like this one. I want to put this one into a busier spline and I also want to give this one uniform in between cuts. Okay, so let's leave this one at eight. This one is looking good. We need a profile now. 
now let's create a circle and we want to put this one to an ellipse. I just want to maybe go for something like this one. Okay, this is looking fine. Now I need a sweep, put the circle and the spline into the sweep. Now you get this little sausage here and you can already imagine that when we put this one into a builder and a mesher, put the builder in the mesher, put the sweep and the cube into the builder. Now we combine this one, but this is not what we want, right? We want to subtract this one. Okay, there you go. You already got a little riverbed here. Well, maybe we can press Alt D on the sweep and we could go to the deformers, hold down shift, and then go on to the displacer to create a displacer on the same hierarchy level here. Now go into it, put a noise into this one. Oh, and I thought that we already subtracted this one. Sorry, we need to select this one more time just to give this one a little bit of a displacement here. I think we need to have more resolution. Put this one to two and it seems that we got a little problem here. Why is this pixelated? I think it's because when we deactivate this one, press NB to see the subdivisions, you can see that this one has barely any subdivisions. So click on the spline, put this one maybe to 50. Oh, let me see. Let's put this one to 100, something like that. Click on the circle, put this one to 50. And I'm just aiming for something like little squares here, maybe even 100. Something like this one seems to be fine. NA to get rid of the lines. And then I want to activate this one more time. Okay, this one is looking horrible, but this is just because the height should be probably 20. And in the shading, in the noise, you want to hold down shift and just click and drag this one just a little bit to get something in a more decent size, something like this one. But of course, you could also go to a new tours, for example, or let me see what Naki is doing. Okay, Naki gives me more like a rocky texture. I want to blow this one up to just a bigger size, something like this one. Okay, so now we got just a little bit of surface details here. And maybe, I mean, we can also do this one, put the displacer into the cube. Now the cube will also get displaced, but you can see something is wrong here. This is because the cube has barely any subdivisions. Let's put this one to 300, this one to 100, this one to 300. Let's see this one more time. Okay, so now this one also has the displacement from a Naki noise, but in this one, I want to set this one to planar and I only want to have this one on the Y axis, something like this one, okay? So it's clean from the side, but we get displacement on the top. I think that this one is looking good. I just want to now duplicate this one and in this one, in the builder, I want to set this one maybe to four to just get a bit of a lower resolution collider mesh. And now I want to right click on this one, current state to object, kill this one and this one is the beauty object. I also want to create a current state out of this one and I could make this one invisible just as a little backup. But what I did now is to create a beauty object. This one here has more subdivisions just to catch more details in the rendering. But then let me just see, hopefully this one has lower subdivisions. Yes, you can see that this one is just coming along with a bit of a less subdivided structure. Let me just compare this one more time. Yes, this one is detailed. This is what you want to show in camera, but this one here will be your collide mesh for liquid gen. Press NA to get rid of the lines. And I think now just for liquid gen, we need to help it a little bit and just rotate this one downwards just a little bit like that. Okay, so that the river, that the fluid will just have a direction downwards. This one will help us, but just be sure in the full training, as I already mentioned, we will build something more decent, something which will give you just a way better simulation. Okay, but now to keep it simple and just show you the process, you can now call this one collider and go to file export and go to FBX, click on the cogwheel and just make sure that you selected selection only. Okay, and now just save this one as a collider object. And now you should have a collider object FBX. Okay, this one is looking good. Let's now go to liquid gen. And I mean, here is already one of my final simulations. I did several ones. This one, I think it's especially beautiful. The river is just flowing so nicely and we could then add some vitamins to it, do some crazy camera animation and this will just look amazing. You can, by the way, also go into the settings. And for example, now this one is set more to a flip simulation with a lot of details, with a lot of turbulent curls. But if you want to have this one feel more like a small scale simulation, you can just put this one to 10 more into a pick simulation. And now you can see this one is flowing more calm, more beautiful, more elegant. But once again, when I put this one to 90, now you can see the details, the curls, the small twists will come back into the simulation. Okay. But this is not what we want to do. We want to go just through the full process from Cinema 4D to Liquid Gen. And yeah, therefore you will just now select your collider new, put this one into Liquid Gen and let's just build this one from scratch. Okay. But just be sure because this is the short version of the tutorial. This is not a two hours version. We need to just uh, make some shortcuts here, but I will just make sure that you still get something decent. Oh, by the way, this is the typical gacha. Now you can see I import in my shape, my collider mesh into the collider, but this is something 
something that will happen you often, you should not put this one below zero. Just make sure that you move this one now over the zero line, something like this one, okay? Just levitate this one up, okay? Sorry, I wasted one minute of your lifetime, but now you have to export the collider one more time. I have a new collider, which is called Haya, okay? Very clever, Marcus. Move this one into your liquid gen. Now put this one into the collider shape. You can kill the other container here, and now you can see that this one is nicely levitating over the zero line. This is looking amazing. Well, okay, not amazing, but it's a good start here, all right? So what you then next should do is to go to the emitter. This one is emitting from this shape here. So you could move the sphere over there. And by the way, when I'm holding down Alt and the left mouse button, I can rotate around my scene, something like this one. So I will just put this one over here. And by the way, a sphere is looking nice here, but I think that we could put this one into an ellipsoid. And now I have to just stretch this one out a bit more, something like that. We could also give it a little bit more volume here and a little bit more size in the y-axis, something like this one for our emitter shape. All right, this one is looking good. We can just quickly check what is happening here. All right, okay, typical gacha number two, newly created particles are being deleted. What is happening here? I think the drain, when we show this one, yes, you can see that everything outside of this cylinder here will be killed and will be taken out of the calculation. This is just effective to save resources, but of course you shouldn't kill your emitted particles already, all right? So give this one a radius of seven to encapsule the whole scene. This is looking good, but I also want to restrict the height to maybe only five. And now I just want to move this one up to something like this one, okay? And you can already see what is happening here. Particles which will reach the border here of your drain container will be taken out of calculation. And this is just super effective. Now let's just see what is happening here. By the way, let's deactivate the show of the drain. And I mean, yeah, okay, this one is a start, but what is happening here is barely visible. So what you should also do is to go to the liquid appearance, create an appearance container, go into the container, set this one to plastic and go into the color and just select something like a dark blue color, something like this one, all right? This will just help you to now really see the particles. And I mean, what we are creating right now is a big mess, okay? So nothing is going as planned. This one is not in your beautiful shape here. It's just doing whatever it wants to do, all right? So there are several tricks to work against that, but I think to just keep it short here, I want to first create a drag container and set this one maybe to a drag of one to slow down the simulation to just suck out a little bit of the energy, make it more calm. You can also go to the simulation and go just up here and increase the step rate maybe to 200 frames per second. And the voxel size, I think we can decrease this to 1.5 to give it more precision. And I think we can also go to the surface tension to just glue the particles more together to put this one to a thousand. But this is just a starting value here. Now let's see if this one is already getting better. Oh wow, this one is super slow. So I think what we can do here is to go into the collider, into the shape and put the relative resolution. I think 10 will be pretty much enough here. Let's see if this one now is running faster. Yes, it's running faster, but at the same time, I think we just suck out too much energy here. Let me just see what happens when I deactivate the force, drag, all right, this one is looking better. This one is moving faster here. But I think that, yeah, a strength of one will be fine. I think that the resolution, maybe for now, we can keep this one at 2.5 to just keep the simulation faster. You can see we lose a lot of fluid back there. So what we could do is go to the emitter and give this one an initial direction. We don't want to have this one in the X axis, but in the negative Y axis. So set this one to minus one and give it a speed of maybe three. Let's just see if now this one will go more a little bit forward. Okay, this one is looking good. I think at the same time, we want to push it downwards with one to just give it a downwards forward direction. And I mean, this is the typical process in the beginning. This will not look amazing, but if you spend some time and actually just go through the workflow that I will show you, you know already where I show you this. But uh, yeah, let me just um, also give this one a little bit more size here. Let's just build a little back wall here. And now you can see that we don't lose fluid back there. We lose a little bit of fluid here onto the landscape but this is something which uh, will take a little bit more care and love and we don't have time for that but let's just see what we get here okay so it's going down the riverbed all right <laughs> it's not as dramatic as I have it in my simulation so what you could do is I mean we can also put a little bit of turbulence into it let's 
let's see what will, will happen now with the simulation. All right, you get all of these additional details in the simulation. Just look at this one. This already helps a lot to make it more detailed, but you want to give this one an animation. And I think the scale could be six or five. All right, this one is too intense. I want to put the strength only to one and the animation speed maybe to three. But you can see already you will get more details in the simulation. But yeah, I mean, overall, this one is looking cool. You can also go to the simulation to the mesh and activate high quality mesh go with the dilation to something like one to restore something of the lost volume and go to the smoothing put this one to an iteration of maybe also around one you can see when i activate this one and deactivate this one this one will definitely smoothen out your simulation here and i mean we get already something okay i mean you can see this one it's not as dramatic as <laughs> my simulation but at least we fill up the river here get some details in the simulation and yeah we lose a little bit of water over there but i would say that this one is a decent start i mean we only spent like five minutes here but let me also quickly just open up a final file here you can see i have a couple more containers over there in the node tree but it's not complicated i will just show you everything on my patreon but you can see with a little bit more love you can definitely create a stunning river in real time just look at this one i mean it's really real time and i think when i lately opened up houdini this was definitely not the case okay so yeah even though that houdini is the king of course um this one here liquid gen is just incredibly fast when i would go here to the simulation container i think that i already showed you this one but i think that this is just so much fun to maybe now go to the pick flip settings i put this one back to 10 i think i already showed you this one right but now you can smoothen this one out depending on what you need for your simulation but you could also put this one back to 90 to get all of these little flip simulation details the curls all of that cool stuff here okay and now it's just up to you to uh, set this one up you can even go lower with the box size you could smoothen it out even more turn it into something like caramel if you are after that if you add some simulate true viscosity to create a caramel river this one would be also an amazing idea for the next tutorial by the way okay but yes i think i only wanted to show you that adding liquid gen to your 3d generalist toolkit is just super powerful okay so i'm already using this for cosmetic and food clients by the way and yeah the full training here will be on my patreon and you can see there are also other courses on how to control liquids and just make them really really nice with liquid gen and cinema 4d all right so i think that this is it for today day maybe you could do me a favor and write a comment share some love ring the bell subscribe to my youtube channel or even support me on patreon but other than that i just want to now wish you a powerful day thank you so much for your time see you next training bye everyone